Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. I've always been curious about the phrase, it was in the last place I looked. To which my way of thinking said, well, yeah, you wouldn't go on looking for it once you already found it, right? So I don't think we really need that explanation. I think I found it would be just plenty. I've got a little story I want to read here. It's about the um, fourth ancestor of Zen, the one no one really knows much about, uh, be Master Dao Jin. And, you know, we know Bodhidharma and we know to an extent we go probably not much more than he chopped off an arm to prove his desire to be Bodhidharma's student. And Seng San, we know from uh, the Jin Jin Ming. And then there's Dao Xin, and there's not a whole lot about him. And then there's Hong Gren, who doesn't have all that much about him, but we know of him from the Platform Sutra and uh, giving Winung transmission and making him the sixth patriarch. So this is a little Dao Xin story, though. In the middle of the Zheng Wan uh, period of the Tang Dynasty, the fourth ancestor, Dao Xin, saw strange signs in the sky over Nitu Mountain from a distance and conjectured that some rare person must be living there. He went by himself to the mountain to search for them. Upon his arrival, he asked a monk of the temple whether there was a person of the way staying there. The monk answered that all those who have left home are people of the way. The ancestor went on, but which one is truly a person of the way? The monk made no reply. Then another monk directed him, 10 kilometers from here, deep in the mountains, there lives a man called Lazy Rong. He never stands up or joins his hands to greet those who approach, as in he doesn't bow to them. Is he a person of the way? Having learned this, the ancestor immediately went there as directed. On his arrival, he saw Farong sitting upright and self-possessed, paying no attention to his visitor. The ancestor asked him, What are you doing here? I am contemplating mind. Who is it that contemplates mind? And what is the mind that is contemplated? Farong had no answer, but immediately stood up and made a deep bow. Then he asked the visitor, where does this worthy one dwell? Daoxin replied, I never remain in any one place, but I wander here or there. Do you know the Chan Master Daoxin? Why do you mention him? I have always greatly admired him, and I intend to visit him that I may offer my respect. Daoxin is my humble name. Why have you come here? Farong asked. I have come here to look for you. Do you have a place where we can rest? Farong took his visitor to a hut behind the cave that was guarded by wild animals, tigers and wolves, and the ancestor raised his hands as if frightened. Farong remarked, You are still like this? What is this? replied Dao Xin. Farong made no answer. Later, the ancestor wrote the character Fo, Buddha, on where Farong sat. When Farong saw this, he was shocked. The ancestor said to him, Are you still like this? Farong did not understand, so earnestly asked the ancestor to explain what he meant. The fourth ancestor said, 
The hundred thousand gates of the Buddha Dharma all return to awareness, where measureless richness originates. The source of all subtleties is awareness. The precepts and monastic standards, meditative practices, the Dharma gates of insight and wisdom, and all of their manifestations and wonders are not separate from your mind, and they never depart from this. All hindrances to the attainment of bodhi, which arise from passions that generate karma, are originally non-existent. Every cause and effect is but a dream. There are no three worlds to be dropped off. There is no bodhi to attain. The original nature and the outer appearance of people and the thousand things are not separate. The vast way is formless and boundless, free from thought and anxiety. If you now realize the Dharma, then there is nothing lacking in you, and you yourself are no different from Buddha. There is no teaching left other than letting your mind rest in its own nature. You need not practice cultivation to purify your mind or undergo austerities. Live without craving and anger, without anxiety or fear. Be boundless and absolutely free from all conditions. Go freely in any direction you like. Do not try to do good or evil. Whether you walk or stand, sit or lie down, whatever rises before the eyes is nothing other than the essential source, the subtle activity of awakening. It is joyful, free from care. This is called Buddha. Frong asked, if awareness is complete in itself, then what is Buddha and what is mind? The fourth ancestor answered, if not for this mind, there is no asking about Buddha. In asking about Buddha, it is nothing but the mind. Frong continued, if there is no meditation, what do you mean when mental states emerge? The ancestor replied, mental states are originally neither good nor bad. What emerges is due to your mind. If your mind is free from fabrication or conception, how could illusions occur? When illusion, illusions do occur, Actual awareness will freely be aware of everything. Just act in accordance with this awareness as it is. Do not look for ways to manage it. This is called continuously abiding in the essence of things, the Dharmakaya, which is motionless. I have received the teachings of sudden enlightenment from the third ancestor, Seng San, and I now give them to you. Bear in mind what I have said. Stay on this mountain, and later there will be five sages that will succeed you in the profound teaching. There is a legend that after this, birds no longer carried flowers to Master Farong. After this transmission of Chan to Farong, the fourth ancestor returned to Mount Shuangfeng and remained there for the rest of his life. After taking his Dharma seat, Master Farong's teachings flourished widely. Interesting story, right? You never hear anything much about Dao Shen. <clears throat> so um, we've we've we're in the midst of the holiday season, and the Buddha said that our cause, our source of dissatisfaction is craving, clinging, and aversion. Ooh, I want the pony. Oh, I didn't get the pony. I don't want the pony anyway. Oh, I have the pony, but geez, you have to clean up after ponies. That's not so cool. Oh, I really want to be with my family this holiday season, but I can't. I wish they would be with me forever. Meanwhile, you show up at that holiday dinner and within five minutes, ugh, 
I can't wait to get away from these people. Ugh. We want what we don't have. Once we have it, we want it to last. And... Sometimes we just plain don't want stuff. We want something else instead. Now, Farong and Dao Xin went through a similar thing here, where Farong thought he was doing something that would get him what he wanted, what he didn't already have. He was meditating, he was being a hermit so that he could become a Buddha, an enlightened, awakened being. Dao Xin comes along and says, uh, so what are you contemplating and what's doing the contemplating and so, and of course, Farong had no answer, as we just heard. It was like, oh, wait, I didn't think about that bit. I mean, what, what is it that I am contemplating, and, and what's doing the contemplating, and if I call it mind, what is mind? I don't know. I want answers. We always find ourselves in positions where we think we're going right straight into something and boy, I'm going to get there. Of course, throughout history, that's always been, you know, the monk meditating to become Buddha. That's been, you know, someone living in a forest alone in austerity, like the Buddha, for example, looking for something, looking for that awakening, looking for that state that he thinks he doesn't have. When it comes down to it, when we scrape away all of these wants and desires and clinging and aversion. What's left? What is it that is doing this sweeping away? What is there to be swept away? All of these things that we consider barnacles, these appendages, these, these uh, lichens and moss that we have uh, that's staining ourselves, is all fabricated. We make it up. We tell stories between our own ears and we listen to them and we think they're true. But in reality, all those things are just characterized by emptiness. This pain I'm feeling today over, you know, not being with my family. The pain I'm feeling by uh, being subjected to my family. is all empty. It's all subject to causes and conditions. It's empty. When you get down to it, the only thing that's changed is what's up here. Now, Given that we all think we want to be somewhere we're not, or we want to be with someone we're not, or ugh, can't wait to get away from the someone who we're with, and 
uh, want all these different things and want to avoid all these other different things. When somebody tells you that, yeah, put all that down, what's left? It's always in the last place I look for it. <laughs>